I will never forget seeing an athlete that I have coached for the last four years, Nathan George, jump for the first time. I remember vividly thinking to myself, this kid will never, ever, ever be successful. I have my workout out for me. This is going to be one of the hardest challenges I've ever approached as a coach. He has very little coordination when it comes to jumping. He's not strong. He doesn't appear to be super fast. It doesn't look like he has a lot of basketball experience. And if this kid is able to dunk a basketball at all, I will be more than happy. Well, I'm happy to say that to my surprise, Nathan has proven me wrong time and time and time again. What's up guys? My name is John Evans. I coach the highest jumper in the world, Isaiah Rivera, as well as a handful of other athletes who have gotten their verticals to the mid to high 40s, as well as a few that have hit 50 inch verticals, specifically Tony Crosby and Donovan Hawkins. Now in today's video, I'm gonna talk about that athlete, Nathan George. When Nathan first started working with us, he was about six foot, could touch about 10 feet, and was incredibly, incredibly weak, as I said. So that first year, all we did was introduce him to high level training. Now Nathan has done almost every single training cycle that I've ever written. Every cycle I've written for Isaiah, he's pretty much done. At this point, he's now at the very advanced stages and is now at the point where he's able to windmill pretty much first try any given day on 10 feet. He's hit an East Bay on 9-11, as well as getting incredibly close every single time he's dunked. He's better than me, which I never expected, as I said. He has surprised me pretty much every single time that he's gone out and dunked in the past couple of years. So that said, how did Nathan get to a point where he's now better than I ever thought he could be and even better than I ever was or probably ever will be? Well, the first year he started working with us, we pretty much increased his force capabilities via strength work. This was a lot of power cleaning, a lot of deep back squatting, doing a lot of heavy RDLs, minimal calf raises, and a lot of sprinting as well as general work. So that first year, we pretty much laid the groundwork for Nathan in terms of increasing his capacity or his ability to handle general training. So at the start, Nathan was touching about 10-3, which to dunk a basketball, you basically have to be able to touch about 10-6 on 10 feet. Within that first three month period, Nathan went from touching 10-3 to being able to dunk on a 10 foot hoop. His clean started around the bar and after the first three or so months, he got up to basically doing 50 or so kilos. His back squat during that time went from about 50 kilograms to about mm, give or take 90 kilograms by the end of the first year. After that first year of training, he was able to dunk about 50% of the times that he was doing a lob from someone else, which honestly was pretty good for him considering that again, I never expected him to dunk whatsoever. Now the thing that Nathan did better than almost anyone else on our training is that he was super consistent. He never missed a workout, whether it was a general day doing static flexibility or it was sprints while working a full-time job. This is something that most athletes that we coach lack. They don't have the resilience or the fortitude to be able to do every single workout that we write, along with the fact that workouts are freaking hard, especially at that time when I was pushing up volumes way higher for most of my athletes. So then year number two started and Nathan, his goal was really to hit a windmill at that time. So this is about 2021, 2022, and this is really where he started to dunk consistently off of his own lob. So he's probably touching around 10, nine, 10, 11 on his best days. I would say consistently, probably about 10, eight, his squat ended up going all the way up to a, a little over 100 kilos, which is like 220. And this is deep and Nathan's about six foot, probably weighs around 140. So he's gained, I think about 10 to 15 pounds of muscle mass and then also stayed incredibly lean, which is very, very difficult to do. Again, Nathan came in kind of unassuming, right? I never expected him to be as explosive as he is today. I wanna say at this time, Nathan was probably struggling to power clean 80 kilos. Maybe he had gone slightly above that, but roughly that's where he was after that second year. So again, he went from basically being able to maybe grab the rim with his fingertips to in year two, consistently hitting dunks on 10 feet off of his, his own lob, as well as maybe even trying or attempting windmills, which at that time was really impressive. I think I had maybe just hit my first windmill off the dribble, but I had had days where, you know, I was damn near putting my elbow in the rim at that time. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, wow, he's really impressed me up to this point. He's way further along than I ever expected. It would be really cool if he hits a windmill someday. So insert year three. This is where Nathan really, really started to take off. At this time, he was probably touching almost 11 feet or close to, maybe just shy of that. And this is again, where we saw those strength gains continue to go up and increase. Now his squat is around 125 kilos, which is quite a bit heavier. I mean, you're talking about a full squat, six foot, again, weighing 150, 155. That's pretty impressive, right? So now he's starting to really push his numbers up in the weight room, starting to impress me a little bit in the weight room, which is something, again, 
never expected. His power clean is now 95 kilos, which is pretty considerably heavy, and he's actually attempting windmills out of handoff. At this point, he's consistently dunking as well, as well as getting two hand dunks on 10 feet. So now we're into year four. Nathan has now had a little bit of a back injury after year three. He's you know trying windmills, et cetera, and has a little bit of a back flare up, but Nathan continues to train through that, so probably takes off roughly maybe three months of training during that time, in, at least in terms of intensity. Starts doing some load management stuff for uh, his knee and his back during this time. And typically this is what you'd expect, right? Your intensities are increasing a lot. You're, you're applying a lot more force to the ground. You know, he's someone at this point who's had three plus years of, of training age accumulated and his outputs are obviously going up as a, as a part of this, right? He's sprinting three days a week. He's doing a lot of general volume uh, that is getting progressively easier as he gets closer to peaking, but you know, he's, he's gone to dunk camp, he's traveling. So at this time, you know, he's really starting to lean in fully to training his vertical, or at this time, he's really starting to blossom as an athlete. At this point, you know, I'm kind of realizing that his potential and his ceiling is way higher than I expected. You know, I, I kind of respect him as someone who's one of the more advanced athletes on our training. He's seeing supra maximal eccentric loading, which I typically don't use with any athlete unless they're year two or three in the training because I know they can handle it, they know how to train appropriately, and Nathan had kind of earned that right. So then year four starts, at this time we actually hired Nathan, he's doing sales for us, he is able to quit his job during that time, but he's at a little bit of a plateau. His vertical actually did go up a few inches at this time. Remember, I said he was probably around 10, 11 in the previous year, year three. Year four, now he's actually touching a little over 11 feet, maybe even 11, one. He's also power cleaning about 96, 97 kilos. Again, kind of a little bit of a plateau. His squat has gone up six kilos in that year, which at this point we've gone from him squatting five ki 50 kilos, sorry, to squatting 131 kilos, which is a massive, massive difference. His power clean has gone from the bar all the way up to 97 kilos, almost 100 kilos, which is very heavy. You're looking at 220 for a power clean, and in the squat, you're looking at 288 pounds. And again, he's not dogging the range of motion. He's squatting full range of motion. His legs and quads were considerably larger at this time, really started to fill out his frame a little bit, like again, particularly his lower body. During this time, he's dunking super easily. He's punching one-handers. He's doing tomahawks with one and two hands. He's able to do windmills pretty consistently at this point. And he's starting to attempt East Bay's either off a lob or off a hand on lower rims, maybe 9.6 to 9.7. Maybe occasionally you try it on higher ones, but he's actually trying more difficult dunks. Then we get into now, which is year five. This is where Nathan is at currently. He's now jumping higher than me. I would say he's probably touching 11.4, maybe even 11.5. His flight times are around 0.9 seconds, which for me, that indicates that I'm, if I'm a two foot jumper or my athletes are two foot jumpers, that they're definitely in the, the mid to low 40s. So anywhere from 40 to 44, that's typically where you're gonna be if you're hitting 0.9 to 0.91 of flight time. For example, when Isaiah touches 46, 47 inches, he's hitting 0.94. So Nathan's at 0 0.90, 0 0.91. He's able to hit East Bays on 9.10 or even 9.11. He's basically getting his whole hand inside the rim on those dunk attempts. He's punching windmills out of a handoff, off a lob. He's able to do off the backboard dunks. He's able to do one-handers, two-handers. I mean, he's really, truly, at this point, a very high-level athlete. We also saw his power clean shoot up all the way to 105 kilos for nearly two reps. Now, that's like 230, 235. So he's putting up big boy numbers in the power clean, right? Like, my max is 255, but I was stuck at 240 for years, since I was basically 23 all the way until I was 30, I was stuck at that mark. Now, Nathan's broken through that plateau. His back squat has also gone all the way up to 140 kilos, which is, I think, a little over 300 pounds. Let me double check on that. Yeah, so 308 pounds for a back squat, which is really quite impressive. So he's now really become an output monster. He's hit all of the volumes that I typically have my athletes do. He's not shorted any of that volume. He's done all the sprinting. He's done all the general work. We've got started to get very specific during this time, and he's doing pretty much the same cycles or even more intense cycles than what I would have Isaiah do or even myself I would do. One of the things that allowed him to do that was stopping the work that he was doing on his feet. I think that that allowed him to increase his volume by roughly 20 or 30%, as well as the quality of his training just went up a ton. In year four and five, he really started to dunk more, whereas the first three years, it was more focused on training. 
Year four and five, it was more focused on performance. I would really load him for maybe three to four months, and then I would unload him for an extensive period of time where dunking was the emphasis and not getting his squat up and not getting his clean up. Those were still a part of it, but I wasn't hitting him with insane volumes or insane intensities during that time. I think at this time, I also backed off a lot of the sprint volume, which is something that I've started to do um, later into guys' careers, just because it takes away from the, the quality of their dunk sessions, which needs to be getting more specific as they get further along in their training career. So that is it, guys. That is how Nathan George has seemingly gone from the least impressive athlete I've ever worked with, a high schooler who could barely touch rim at six foot, to now someone who is hitting an East Bay on 9-11 or even almost hitting it on 10 feet, which he'll probably do very shortly here. If you guys are interested in getting coaching, go to teachbestrength.com. Um, if you guys found this interesting, make sure you leave a like or a comment. And uh, shout out Nathan. I mean, he really has challenged everything that I, that I thought I, I knew. And, uh, you know, I appreciate him trusting me enough in that process and for teaching me something. You know, as a coach, it's always good to have your athletes prove you wrong. And uh, he really did. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.